It's the Great Model Railway Challenge, the only show that has a spare presenter in case. It's got bags of drama and it's packed with action. So once again, the nation's top modellers have all come together to compete for the ultimate prize. Now, which one is my... Oh, that's my case. <laughs> the Great Model Railway Challenge is all about incredible layouts. Controversy. I'm worried that's a possible infringement of the rules and could lead to an unfair advantage. And lashings of tea and cake. That'll set my diabetes off a treat. Oh, dear. Series one saw Aberdeen Model Railway Club crowned champions. <laughs> now, 15 new teams of virtuoso modellers are taking a shot at the title. But with more rounds to get through and harder challenges to overcome, the competition's going to be even tougher. Oh, my word, but fire on the track! The four teams who reach the grand final... Blast off! <laughs> will do battle to win a coveted stand at the UK's most prestigious model railway exhibition. And the honour of being declared the new champions... <laughs> ..of the Great Model Railway Challenge. Only the winning team from each heat will go through to the semi-finals. The modelling maestros vying for that spot this week are... Yo, straight out of the Garden of England and keeping it in the family, the Railmen of Kent. We might be a family team, but we're not just here for a family day out. We are here to win. Yes, 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 yes. yes. no. Savouring modelling with mates over marital bliss, the Cambrian Coasters. If we were to win this, this would be a, a, a pinnacle for us. It would be that we've gone from being the, the average modellers through to something really special. Can the water tight underpants, Drew? And here to smash the stereotype that railway modelling is for men only. It's nothing to do with gender, actually. It was Grandma, can we build a railway? Not Grandad, can we build a railway? Yes, the first ever all-female squad to take the Great Model Railway Challenge. It's the Loco Ladies. We met the other teams at breakfast and they went, oh, you all-female team? Oh. We're absolutely set on winning. Each week, the teams are given a theme to work to, an opportunity to express their creativity and flex those modelling muscles. This week, it's Best of British. Welcome to the Great Model Railway Challenge. The theme for this week is the Best of British. That's right, Tim. We want your layouts to celebrate. What makes Britannia unique? Could be anything you like. Could be cream teas... Royal families... Mushy peas... Grime MPs... Right, it's Grime MC... Oh, no, I see your point, actually. <laughs> now, you only have three days in which to complete your layouts and make sure that your railways arrive on time. That's one thing we don't want to be typically British. We'll be judging them on build quality, functionality and creativity, so best of British to you. And your national service starts now. Good luck. <laughs> Teams have been issued with an identical baseboard on which to build their best of British layout. A chance this to depict miniature wonderlands that celebrate Britain and its traditions. Going utterly judgmental on the team's layouts will be two titans of the modelling world. It's beginning to look like old flat caps and snickets to me. Esteemed editor of Railway Modeler magazine, Stern Steve Flint. In this week's challenge, I want to see grand feats of engineering modelled to perfection. I want the teams to make me feel proud to be British. And a master modelling virtuoso vlogger, the steely-eyed Cathy Millett. I want the teams to show me the best of their modelling, whether that's superb build quality, amazing animations, or just something that makes me go, wow. So we have our first all-female team on the Great Model Railway indeed. Challenge. This is great news. Thank How you. hard was it getting you girls together? Um, well, I rang a lot of people up and then found myself confronted with a very negative response. Really. Why is that? I think a lot of them do not see themselves as the main person in their family that do the railway models. Almost certainly they have husbands or partners who are, and then they work alongside them, don't see themselves as the star player, if you like. 
I've gone to shows before now, and I've gone with a bloke because I've given him a lift, and they've let me in for free because I'm a woman, so I can't <laughs> be a model. <laughs> yeah, that's what? happened to me. <laughs> yeah, they say, oh, you're the chauffeur. We don't charge for chauffeurs. I will apologise on behalf of all men. That, I'll make sure that won't happen again. The driving force behind Loco Ladies is Captain Carol, whose passion for miniature railways has been passed down through four generations. When I was a child, my dad had a railway, and my brothers and I used to help him with it and play on it. My grandchildren got interested. One of them builds the biggest trains you've ever seen, and then another train, and then he tries to crash them. Now, you really have to stand back and go, oh, that's nice, thank you. What can we expect from your layout? What we decided to do was to bring, incorporate as many things that were related to the British countryside as possible. This quintessential British summer's day layout will feature a village green and fishermen by a river. But it will also pay tribute to our emergency services. While firefighters tackle a burning barn, an ambulance crew will help rescue some potholers from a cave. And a lifeboat will launch to assist a yacht in distress. And, to cap it all off, in a great model railway challenge first, multicoloured crochet trees. We have a river, we have an estuary, we have a village and we have a, a seaside. Now, you've mentioned seaside. I'm assuming you're doing water. Yeah, you've got your hand on where the water's right, sorry, going. Right, sorry, OK. <laughs> I hope I haven't, but I will do, I'm sorry. <laughs> Cathy is an expert with water. Yeah, Cathy, I know she is. How do you feel about water, the way these guys are doing it? It's just so difficult to get it dried or set yeah. in the time. Yeah. It's a big worry. It'll be dry. I'm confident it'll be dry. Who are Rail Men of Kent? Uh, we're a family. We're from Ashford in Kent. Right. Uh, there's myself, there's my three sons, my brother-in-law Chris and our great-uncle Nick. Seasoned modelling family, the Rail Men of Kent are hoping their generation-spanning dynamic will help their layouts stand out from the crowd. Living together is quite handy for us to work on the railway, so what's been happening is the boys are lying in bed, I'm downstairs from 6am working on the railway, so that when they do eventually get up, because they are teenagers, there's some stuff for them to do in the afternoon. It's a wonderful thing for you all to share a hobby. Yeah. But sometimes you're a little bit on top of each other. The garage has been converted and the garage has got a layout that runs around the perimeter of it and we've squeezed another couple of layouts in on top and below that as well. So right. there is just about space for everyone to <laughs> squeeze in there. Well, let's talk a little sure. bit about your layout. The layout is called uh, Bodicea Park. A replica Skylon from the 1951 Festival of Britain will stand alongside huge models of King's Cross and St Pancras stations on the railman's layout. Iconic British trains will run around their multi-layered track, passing a fully functioning wagon hoist, whilst animated cars circle a roundabout. And to finish, a flyby by the RAF. Meeting the best of British theme, we've got a couple of Britain's best stations, King's Cross and St Pancras. Mm -hmm. We've chosen some locomotives and rolling stock that represent the better, best of British rolling stock design. We have got London Underground Station. There's a wagon hoist. It's a challenging modelling concept, is uh, a wagon hoist, believe you me. The gravity is different for four millimetre scale than it is for the real yeah. thing. Technically, it's not, but I take your point. <laughs> the effect of gravity. The effect of gravity. <laughs> I mean, if there's one thing I would say about your layout, is it's ambitious. Yes, we've gone for ambition. Are you concerned about that you might have bitten off too much? Uh, at times, I have felt that, um, but we have done a lot of planning and we've done a little bit of rehearsal, so I'll be confident that we'll get there. Brilliant. Now, you're... Cambrian Coasters captain. Yes, that's right. right. Yes. And tell us a little bit about your team. We all met on the Chorus Railway where we volunteer, and that led into meeting up on a Friday night at our own houses to play trains, is what we do. And what do you have prepared for us here? OK, so we're going to have a Feast of Britain. Dieters beware. Centred around a farmer's market, the Coasters layout will feature a pasty factory with an animated pasty crimping machine. Whilst a train carries more pasties towards a soup factory, an animated truck will attempt to shift a giant Yorkshire pudding off the village green. And as if that isn't bonkers enough for you, there'll also be a facility for unloading freshly culled haggises. Uh, obvs. You've done a lot of pre-building, haven't you, over the last couple of months? Which has caused a bit of matrimonial discord at times. How so? We've had people building on kitchen tables and... Uh... It's a case of, you know, the motto is modelling before, before marriage. Do your wives have a motto? Yeah, I think you'll be glad when it's all over. <laughs> what, the marriage or the modelling? <laughs> <laughs>
Just a few hours in and the railmen of Kent are on target to get their track laid and trains running by the end of the day. Put some glue yep. underneath the foam and then we'll put the track on top of it and then we're now through the track, OK? The Cambrians haven't been coasting either. The wiring for their track is already completed. We're hoping to test it all tonight, aren't we, Graham? A couple of hours, aren't we? Okay. Yeah, the top circuit's already laid and wired, and it's been tested before, so hopefully it hasn't suffered in the van. As Patrick's a very careful driver, so he tells us. But it's a stickier situation for the loco ladies. Right, go on. Yeah. What's wrong, Chris? What's happened to that? It was all right before. No, this one isn't. OK, I'll fiddle with it. Right, the table's not clipped for a start. Let's clip it. Right. That ah! Right. Let's see what happens. It's It'll all right, we're okay. just having... It's, it's just, just... Just this bit here is what a we bit didn't need. But it's fine, we're nearly there. Right, when they're not looking, that'll be super glue then. <laughs> Early afternoon on day one of this best of British themed heat, and the teams are attempting to keep their eyes on the prize. You realise after this you'll have to fight the women off, Trev. You'll be a star. All female team, the Loco Ladies, have taken a radical decision and diverted valuable woman power to building their scenics before they've tested their tracks and trains. We are calm and collected. We yes, we're carrying on just as we planned. I'm painting the estuary blue at the moment, but I will then immediately move on while it's still wet to a very dark green, so that gives a real feeling of depth to it. Patrick, what's happening here? Is that a giant hot tub? It's a giant Yorkshire pudding. Do you know what the world's biggest Yorkshire pudding was? No. It was made in 1976 by a Yorkshireman. It weighed in at a staggering, I think it was 14,000 tonnes. Good grief. I know. It's the size of a skyscraper. Did you not know that? No. No, I'm lying. I made it up. Okay. Anyway, I love it. I love it. <laughs> this great model railway competition marks the first time that Patrick and his diverse squad of male modelers have ever worked together. The team are an eclectic bunch. There's no unified approach from us. Some of them would like to just work quietly in the corner. How it's going to go on the three days, I don't know. Any worries? Are we supposed to work together? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In order to show off their modelling skills to the judges, each team is permitted to bring along six pre-built items to enhance their layouts. Great Uncle Nick from Railmen of Kent is hoping his iconic stations will give his team a solid platform for victory. Nick, I wasn't aware that you could actually walk into a shop and buy such a, you know, such a large building as this. Well, you can't. I mean, these have been scratch-built. They're, they're made by pure modelling. Right, hang on. These have been made by hand? Yes. We are using very simple tools. We're using a scalpel, a pen and some paint, and right. then we're cutting it out with a ruler. It's quite simple. But hang on, no, it's not. In most people's heads, making something like this is not simple. How on earth have you become so skilled? Well, practice, I suppose. That, that took 40 hours. 40 hours? 40 hours. Is that it? One week. I've sat with other modellers here in other places and they've got a little thing in their hand and they're like, that's, that's two or three weeks' work there. It's really heartening to see some traditional techniques used by hand and uh, I'm so pleased to see that uh, people are entering this competition using these techniques. Oh, wow, Karen, now that looks like something that's been around for a while. My dad made it. He was the one that I played model trains with when I was younger. I wanted to incorporate something of his. I mean, look at that, it's beautiful. It is, it just feels right, actually. I like to, I like to hold it, it's nice. He would have loved this. He'd have loved to know that we'd come to do something like this. Well, I'm sure wherever he is, whatever he's doing, he's looking down and he's very proud of you. Yeah. And, and enjoying you. seeing your boat, his boat, well, yeah. your boat now. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> Well, it's a lovely piece of history you're holding there. The coasters aren't just banking on their pre-bills to give them the wow factor. They're backing veteran modeler Ian to impress the judges with his scratch-built haggis factory. Ian is a very sort of detailed modeler. The first to take his time, so this idea of building something under pressure isn't something he's, he's comfortable with. 
He wants to produce a really detailed model, but he's got to finish it off by tonight. But he wants to put it on tomorrow. So uh, hopefully he'll be okay. I'll do it now in a minute. It's a Welsh phrase that became popular in the uh, Gavin and Stacey programmes. It is typical of me. Never actually do anything at the time I should do. So it's, uh... But the intention's there. Right, the measuring stick now. Railman Fred is also taking his time with the track lane. You haven't got any more track clips over there, have you? I just want one that's a bit tighter than that one. That one's a bit slack. Loco ladies are still waiting for the glue to set under their track and have yet to test their trains. Steaming ahead regardless, they've moved on to creating realistic looking water. I'm just in the process of pouring the water in the estuary. We're hoping it will have dried by about lunchtime tomorrow. It's quite important that it's dry. We can't carry on until it is. The day's gone very well. The water's down. We're pleased with it. It's going to be lovely and shiny. Yep. We have had some issues with track, but we expect to be able to resolve those. We've been working on it. And we anticipate by tomorrow morning we'll have trains running. As day one draws to a close, the judges consider what provisional scores to award the teams for their creativity. Whew, what an opening day to this heat. Cathy, you and Tim have been looking at uh, Loco Ladies. What did you think of their plans? They have it all in there. It's a real slice of Britain. But this is a competition, and I would like to see a little bit more wow factor. I'm going to give them a nice middle three. OK. All right. Steve? Their interpretation is picking up on all the beautiful parts of the British Isles. Mm -hmm. But so far, what I've seen, the creativity is not blowing my socks off. Possibly on target for a three. Well, let's talk then about the railmen from Kent. This is probably the most creative entry in the competition. What I like about what they're doing is the fact they've got two different levels of track which are connected, which is nice. On target for a four if they deliver. Provisionally a four if it all goes to plan. Cassie. I'm going to give them a three. I think they do have some great pre-builds. I'm not sure they have many large animations. Cambrian coasters, Steve. Let's talk creativity. Food, Steve. Yes. Yorkshire pudding. Yorkshire Yeah, it's lax. OK for oh, the Yorkshire also. pudding. Five, but what about away. the best of British trains or the best of British engineering? Well, all that's there, isn't it? Possibly. They are on target for a three. No, I did creative. not see that no, coming. No, I did Kathy. not see that Kathy. coming as well. I think there's a lot of good elements to their creativity. They have some humour. I would just have liked something a bit bolder and bigger for the best of British. I'm going to give another middling three. Cathy, I think you're waiting for that wow factor on all yeah, three layouts. I am. It feels like a real slow burn. Maybe it's about to all catch fire. The Railmen of Kent have established a narrow lead. But it will count for nothing if their trains don't run. There's a final check before we bring some pancreas in, and I, I just need to adjust that point there. Right. So I've got a derailment here, so it means I, I can't go to my next stage, which was bringing in St Pancras, which sits on top. It's vital that I get this running smoothly before I go to the next stage, because it'd be very difficult, if not impossible, to get back to fix it later on. It's better news for Patrick and his coasters. They're keeping the heat on the leaders by being the first to test track. Are we going to test? Yeah, good to test. There you go. Yeah. It works. Well done for your track lane. OK, Patrick. Well done for your electrics. <laughs> well done, sir. <laughs> yeah, well done as team captain, Patrick. Things aren't quite as peachy for the loco ladies. Their track's still not ready to test, and now there's a problem with their waterworks. Oh, God, I know where it's coming through. There's a bit of a gap there. Yeah. Unfortunately, we've got a leak. It's going down through a gap between the two boards. We thought it was OK, but it isn't. It's quite stressful. We'd just prefer not to have had these issues, but that's what you expect. How's it doing? Is it still coming through?
day two of our latest track meet and already a few of our teams are facing substantial hurdles, not least loco ladies, whose water has run but whose layout may not. Currently the team with their noses in front is Railmen of Kent, but it is a marathon, not a sprint, so let's rejoin training. As the teams push forward with their best of British inspired creations, the loco ladies captain Carol is relying on good old fashioned Dunkirk spirit to overcome their leaky layout. It will be better because the lifeboat will go across it smoothly because it's nice and flat, so it'll be fine. To be honest, it could have been a lot worse. <laughs> Absolutely. Look, you don't get to my age and not cope with an awful lot, so you just cope with it as it is. It's fine. It's not a big problem. We're not worried about it. Day two sees the judges scrutinising the team's build quality, assessing everything from scenery construction to how well the tracks have been laid. There's some fantastic modellers here. I'm hoping for some really exciting results. The coaster's trains are running, but Captain Patrick's not dining out on this early success. Oh, no, he's ensuring construction of the team's haggis factory stays on schedule. Hello. How's it going? Uh, reasonably well. So the priority for us is the haggis factory. Yeah. Is that, is that going to be...? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the, the deadlines, um, I'm not over-bothered about deadlines. My priority is basically to enjoy what I'm doing. Um, and to do a proper job on it. Um, we're obviously aiming to finish, you know, within a certain schedule. So okay. Okay. We are, I am working to that. OK. Is honest, 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 honest. honest. Okay. <laughs> Factory first. OK. As we speak. Brilliant. Ian is, is obviously a little bit behind. He wants to make everything really good and perfect. And of course, we're on the game deadline, so we have to we have to shorten that down a little bit. Okay, Nick, uh, loco moving. Back in the display room, it looks like Railman Fred's painstaking track tinkering is paying off. First train on Bodicea Park. It's going well. Do you want a bit of sound? I love the fact you've been brave enough to do point work right at the front here. It looks much more interesting. Well, it's taken a bit of planning, but I think the end result is worth it, and uh, I'm glad that you like it. Thank you. As if the modellers didn't have enough on their proverbial plates, today one member of each team must step up for an additional trial. The scratch build challenge. Some teams think of it as an inconvenience, but with two points on offer, it could make a huge impact on the final result. Scratch building is the art of turning everyday household objects into beautiful scenic items. So your three items are, firstly, a whisk, and then the second one, silver foil, and then finally, probably the most important thing to come out of my kitchen, goggles. Goggles? Yeah, goggles. You wear goggles in your kitchen? Safety first, that's the most important thing. There you go. Three items, two points at stake for the winner, so make sure you take this seriously. And your time starts now. Good luck. I'm thinking contemporary street lights for the whisk bits. Uh, and as for the safety goggles, it's such a weird shape. I really don't know what I'm going to do with this. <laughs> You know, it's an interesting challenge. I like solving problems, so this is a problem. What do I do with this? <laughs> Next stage, I think, is to, to go inside. We'll have a chat as a team. Um, I'll run my ideas past them. They'll tell me not to be so stupid and come up with something even better, hopefully. While the scratch builders get busy, the ladies' locos finally get a test drive, a day later than planned. This is my little test train. There we are. It went round. We're absolutely thrilled that it's working. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Does that sit on here? No, it goes flush with the bottom of the bottom of the board. On the neighbouring table, the Cambrian coasters are making major progress with their scenics, installing one of their pre-built showstoppers, a massive viaduct. That's made a big difference, hasn't it? Well done. All right, well done. <laughs> The Scratch Build Challenge is now well underway, with the plucky volunteers putting my kitchen cast-offs to good use and hoping to bag two valuable points for their team. 
The hardest part was probably peeling all the silver foil off the inner tube. It's taken me about 10 minutes, and that's going to be the base of the communications tower I'm going to build. Time pressure, I'll either do it or I won't. I've removed the, the little orange pieces that were in the arms here, cut them into, uh, so we've got little surfboards. With the tin foil, I'm doing a modern sculpture, which is going to be painted up and it's going to be a bit bigger than this as well. Excuse me, Graham. What's going on here at the back? We've just got the engage part of the layout actually running. Nice. It's a huge viaduct with a very little train on it. Why? It's to give a sense of perspective from the front to the back of the layout. Mm. Fooling people like Steve into thinking they're seeing something that's actually really, really far away. Yes, that's correct. Because that's, that's that there, and that's a... Yeah, oh, yeah, much, much bigger. Much, much bigger. You've done a beautiful job on this. So what do you think of the kit work going on here, then, Stephen? 20 arches. You've built it from a cab kit, and to my eye, you've really done a splendid job. You have five minutes to complete the scratch build challenge. We've got the surfboards made out of part of the glasses. Just need to make this balloon stand up now. The scratch build is ready to go down. Scratch build's ready to go down? Oh, where's it going, then? That's going in there. Yeah. Neil, I'm assuming that's for the scratch build challenge, right? It is. OK, you have 180 seconds left to get it on the board. Shoo, shoo, get it, get it on that board. Quick. 30 seconds remaining. Your time is up. Please step away from your board. <laughs> Neil, scratch build, three yeah. items, where have you stashed them? They're all on the communications tower. Well, all your eggs in one basket? Absolutely, yes. Don't think that's been seen before. Right, so what are we looking at here? The base of it is the inner of the roll of tin foil. The grey section on top of it is the base of the balloon whisk. And the arms coming out of the top are the wires on the balloon whisk with the plastic sleeving stripped off, trimmed and bent, and the safety goggles are the two microwave dishes. What sort of signals are those two dishes receiving? Are they saying, where's the silver foil? Quite possibly, yes. Where is the silver foil? Silver foil was on the floor in the build room. So you didn't use it? Didn't use a silver foil. Right, so most of it's there? Most of it's there. Well. Thanks for showing it to me. Good luck. Thank Go you on, very much. On. Well done. Jill, scratch build challenge. What have you come up with? Where have you creatively laid them on your board? OK, well, the hot air balloon over there is created from the balloon of the whisk. Jill, that is great. It's a partially inflated, deflated hot air balloon. I love it. The uh, handle of the whisk was used to make the lighthouse. Oh, yes. What are the rocks made from? Some of the silver foil painted with acrylic paints, dusted with a bit of sand and then crumpled up. What about my goggles? Well, I knew you'd like this, Tim. Surfboards. They're cool. I also use the rest of the arms as stanchions on the key at that side. Oh, right. And that is part of all three of the items. Thank Good you. Good stuff. Cheers, Jill. Good luck. Thanks. John, the scratch wheel challenge. Where have you put them on your layout? Um, firstly, we have the safety goggles disguised as a modern London bus stop. Right. It's even got a St Pancras timetable on there. It's not the actual times, it's just okay. scribbles, but... Um, and the rods of this are also made from the metal in the whisks. Uh, next, we have the sculpture that spins on the roundabout, and that's made of the aluminium foil. Uh, we have the bunting, which is supported by the rods from the whisk. Oh, that's good. And then the tops of the whisks I've used as arches. Well done, sir. That's good work. Just when I thought there wasn't that much creativity between the three teams, how wrong was I? Three tricky items and, and loads of creativity on their layout. Weren't they just, yeah. Let's start with the loco ladies. What do you reckon? Wow, they had everything on there. They had the foil, they had that whisk, stanchions, surfboards, just a lot. I feel like there's a buck coming on, though. I just felt that the lighthouse especially looked a bit amateurish. Right, let's move down to the Cambrian coasters. It was a very nice modelled item. Did it need weathering? It really did, yes. It was just a grey rattle can on there. There were some parts missing 
from the scratch build. As far as I'm concerned, the silver foil should have been on their layout somewhere. You can do everything from corrugated iron, anything you want to mould and move. It's perfect. So yes, I think they missed a trick there. OK, right, the Railman of Kent. I love that sculpture, especially as it was moving. How do you feel about the bus shelter? Yeah, it looked very authentic to me. One of those awful ones that you would stand under and get wet as soon as it started raining and the wind blew. And then we had the bunting and the arches. Yeah, they are OK. So who are you going to give those all very crucial two points to, Cathy? The Railmen of Kent. That spinning sculpture just sold it to me. Family fortunes are smiling on the Railmen. I won the scratch for challenge. Yeah. That's two vital points John has bagged for his team. Thank you. <laughs> wow, I really wasn't expecting that this morning. Um, when I was first given the scratchwood items. Uh, but wow, wow. I'm so happy. <laughs> there are well over 100,000 railway modelers in the UK. Artists whose work is mostly hidden away in lofts and garages. On the Great Model Railway Challenge, they can showcase their talents to a much wider audience. And Railman Fred hopes his creation will rise to the occasion. This is the wagon hoist. Oh, wagon. Can I see? Yeah, of course. Right. It's, oh, it's light. Yeah, what's it, what's it's it made light. of? It's made out of plastic card, uh, small plastic girders and plastic strip. Right. And Because it, it looks very authentic. Did you design this yourself? Uh, I designed it myself and it's scratch built. Are those Lego wheels? Are they, they are Lego wheels, <laughs> well spotted. <laughs> very nice. Yes, yes. Excellent. So now this is, I'm guessing, the motor that's going to make that do its thing. Yep. And then we have a drive belt. OK, this is what I'm curious in. So yeah. this, basically, you've got a large rubber band that's going to make that go around. A very around. large rubber band that right. comes off the drive wheel on the motor, which is mounted below the baseboard, and then it will come up to meet the pulley wheel on the top. How easy is it to get that to actually work and not make the thing uh, We've had it fly off a couple of times, actually, oh, yeah. yeah. So there is a risk of it flying off if we don't stop at exactly the right point. It'll be spectacular if it, it works. It will speak, yes. If it doesn't, well, it'll be my fault. As the end of day two approaches, what provisional marks will the judges award the teams for their build quality? All will be revealed in the station house. Let's talk about how our little Britons are looking. Starting off, Steve, with a bit of build quality chat about the lovely loco ladies. Oh, a lovely team, bursting with enthusiasm and clearly having fun. What did you particularly like about their build quality? Well, the quick methods they used, tissue, paper, glue, mm. paint, to create the cliffs just right for this competition. I'm edging up to a three. Cathy, I know that you'll have some things to say about the lovely river, is it, what's it called, Lacey, that's running through? Yeah. Yeah, I think they have had problems with their resin. And they did have leakage. They didn't quite seal that as well as they could have. So I'm going to go with a nice, solid three. Let's talk about Cambrian coasters. Cathy, you first. What do you make of their layout, build-wise? I'm less convinced by the scenery than I would hope to be at this point in the competition. It's just looking a little flat still. Having said that, I do think that their track is very well laid and overall their build quality is very solid. Mm. So, three. A three. Steve? I'm really impressed by that viaduct, which uses the technique of forced perspective, so I'm really looking forward to getting down to eye level and seeing how the illusion works. Mm. I think, overall, we're looking towards a four. Right, the Railmen of Kent. The point work and the track work looks well laid and the trains are running well, but they've still got their crown jewels to come, St Pancras and King's Cross. Yes. And I think their build quality is going to be superb. Are you going to go five on this? You, you know me, I'm, I'm actually going to go four. All right, yeah. I think these guys have been testing the track very, very carefully, very impressive. I'm going to forecast four out of five for build quality. Oh, that's impressive, isn't I it? I thought it was going to be a five. All three layouts, though, it feels that they're about to really unleash something special. Yes, there's certainly a lot more to come. Can't wait. At the end of day two, the Railmen of Kent have maintained their lead after winning the Scratch Build Challenge. But with the demonstration still to come, it ain't over till the lady of a certain age sings. People keep asking me if we're going to win it. <laughs> we would love to win it. But we honestly are so tired. We don't think we've got the stamina to keep doing it. Do not put that in or I will come and find you and kneecap you. Day three of our Best of British Challenge, and you know it's looking tighter in there than a double stack freight train in a standard loading gauge tunnel. All three layouts have really blossomed on this final day. Railmen, Loco Ladies, Cambrian Coasters, which will rule Britannia? Let's find out. <laughs> Time.
time's almost up and the teams are going at it like runaway trains, adding the finishing touches to their layouts. Is that running on the inside now, James? It's still a three-horse race, and with the crucial functionality test looming, it's vital the layouts work perfectly. I'm feeling pretty good. There's a few things that are a little bit... to finish off in the last hour. Let me pack it a hedging, Trev. The chasing pack are determined to prove they deserve a place in the semi-finals. And the railmen of Kent aren't beating around the bush either. Big trees? Not be too dominating. I think the little trees would be better. Not the apple trees, I don't think. Meanwhile, the loco ladies... Oh, God, they look good. I haven't seen them all together before. ..are taking a more impressionistic approach towards their scenics. Now, you've crocheted these. Yes, I have. C can I pick one up? Of course you can. They're great. How do you make these? Um, basically, use a crochet hook, start off at the base, make a circle, and then just work your way up, really. OK. Why did you crochet these? Because we wanted it to represent something that was a bit different in the modelling world. Colours are beautiful. The colour somehow represents the whole world. And usually people are aiming for hyper-realism with their layouts. Yeah. We've tried for that in some of the places, but we wanted to set out to make something that was accessible to anybody, not just people who love model railways. We wanted them to be able to walk in and go, look at that, look at that, that looks fun. Wow, how did they manage that? Guys, sorry to be the bearer of bad news. We have only 30 minutes left. All we need to do now is do a full test of everything. OK, yeah. fine, yes, yes, boss. Whatever you say, we'll do it. Give me a bow. Give me no, a bow. No, 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 we need to put a fence around it, don't we? Have you glued that ballast down? Do you want to go? Let me have a go. No, come on. This is good, this. <laughs> <laughs> With a mere 600 seconds to go... Attention, teams, you have 10 minutes remaining. 10 minutes remaining. Disaster strikes the Cambrian coasters during a last-minute electrical test. Oh, no. Not going? No, I've got short. Is it going over that crossover? We've had a short circuit. It could be a two-second fix, it could be an hour. We don't know. All right, leave him be. Leave him be, that's not hassling. Swans, Chrissy. What? Swans. Well, I don't know where the swans are. Adjacent to the building, between the track and the building, one, two, three, say four big ones there. One minute, everybody. Change B2 back. That's a short gone. No. Ten. Nine. Ah, I'm stuck. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Still got a short. Three, yeah. two, one. It is all over. Please step back from your boards. Oh, goodness me. <laughs> well done, guys. Well, well, well done. Well done, Trip. <laughs> We've had a short circuit literally in the last five minutes. It's just one of those things that happens. We can hope that this will just come back to life when we turn the power back on. The team did really well and we pulled together. I'm really proud of the fact that we're a family team and that everyone has contributed to this layout that we've built here. It's just got to work now, fingers crossed. I feel overwhelmed because we're so tired but we're thrilled to bits. We can't wait to show people our animations and the storyline that we've got with it. The team's friends and family have come to Forley to lend their support today. Cathy and Steve will assess how well the layouts function and possibly revise their earlier creativity and build quality scores now that the boards are finished. The railmen of Kent are currently out in front, but until they blow the judges' socks off with flawless functionality, this is still anyone's game. Full max for functionality means the slick and smooth operation of trains and animations. They've got to take me right back to the golden age of railway modelling. First to go, it's the Cambrian coasters. Will their festival of British food satisfy the judges' appetite for perfection? Or will unreliable wiring and a stuttering pasty train prove too much for Cathy and Steve to swallow? 
Mm. Well, this looks tasty. It's a festival of food, Patrick. That's right. We wanted to bring the food into the town and sort of really celebrate British food. Miles away in the distance, there's a train running back and forth, but it's actually just an optical illusion, Tim. Is it? Yeah, that's the force perspective, Patrick. That's engage your two millimetre scale to give the whole idea of distance in the background. So haggis, Yorkshire puddings and leek soup. Well, this could all end up being awful, but I can't wait to see you batter the opposition. I think we're all waiting with baited broth. Oh. Go on, then. let's see it. First movement is the haggis loading train is coming through. And that's going to pull through to the chute and ready to collect the haggis. There we go. OK. So then the haggis should now come out from the factory. Right. Oh. Quite a hitch on that. There we oh, go. Come on, come no, on, a little bit more. Push <laughs> it. Whoa. We're not going to touch it. Whoa. While this is going on, there's also a, a cookery demonstration going on in the fair. Yes, there is, and the audience are watching that in the background at the moment. Who's the chef? That's actually my wife in the background. Oh, right, nice one. So, Patrick, went past this, this building down here, which looks really intricate. That is the Cornish pasty factory, so the mines uh, to the left are, are where the, uh, the pasties are brought out from. They're taken through and processed, and they're crimped. And then you'll see the pasties coming out. Oh, yeah. Oh, damn. wow, look at that. The very large crimping machine. Right, right. And we have a slight problem. OK. Well, that's a shame. What's happening here? We've got a problem with the point. We had a slight problem. problem with the point. Right. We're back on. It is indeed. Now, what I'm most looking forward to seeing here, Patrick, is what's going to happen with that giant... It looks almost like a life raft of Yorkshire pudding. It's a Yorkshire pudding hot tub. It is a giant Yorkshire pudding specially made for the event and unfortunately it's been dropped in the wrong place. Ah. Will the crane actually animate and move it? It will indeed. It will give it a go and try and move. Whoa. Oh, it's too heavy. Oh. Can't do it. Yeah, the Yorkshire amazing. pudding hot tub is too heavy. <laughs> Carry on. We'll run that round and we'll put that into the siding. No, it's come off again. There's something happening around the back which is yeah. chucking it off. So we've got a couple of minor issues here with, with derailments. The, with the pasty muffler. Well, right. yeah, but a lot of these the trains are coming off in two specific... round the back and round here. Yeah, that's fine. We had a slight issue earlier on with our electrics, so... And the good news is it's working again. It is, and the pasty now goes into the loading siding and it, that's the end of our sequence. Cameron Coasters, a round of applause, I think. Thank you. Next to demonstrate are Railmen of Kent. Bodicea Park is their love letter to two iconic London stations. But are they being premature with their victory parade? And will their ambitious engineering be their undoing? Come on, let's see it. Looking forward to seeing it. The, the layout represents suburban railways of this part of London. So we've got a London pannier tank with its local service and then we've got another stopping service that's coming off the metropolitan lines and going out to the great northern suburbs. In the park you can see a representation of Henry Moore statues are stones from the beach that John has mounted and glazed and bronzed to give a nice representation. That's actually because there is a Henry Moore on the front of King's Cross. So we've got another high-speed train departure now from St Pancras heading off to the north. And once he's gone, I will ask the team to operate the beer hoist. Cool. So this Class 25 is now going to come up and he'll pick up the wagon and take it in and then shunt it down. So this is an amazing operation, a high-risk operation, isn't it? Because this particular train is going to come up and pick it up, so you've got to make sure all the tracks line up perfectly. That is correct. So a lot of pressure on you here. OK, loco coming out. Here comes the loco. It all depends on the tracks lining up. Could this be an example of an engineering step too far? Ooh. OK, yes, it's in, yeah. Got it. Oh. Well, it's down the track, well, it's... <laughs> it was a big risk, but worth taking. Wow. That's remarkable. 
So we move into the climax now. It's Bodicea Park. There's obviously a lot going on. Who is the most important person in the country when we're talking about Best of Britain? It's Her Majesty the Queen. And Her Majesty the Queen travels around on the Royal Train. Oh, yes. Oh. There it is. Oh. Yes. Wow. It's a Class 67 locomotive. It's painted in royal colours. I see. So the Queen, who often travels by train, now arrives into St Pancras. There is no good park opening or event with the Queen without a fly past from two British icons of the sky, the Spitfire and the Hawk. Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. The red arrows themselves. Oh, it's beautiful. That, that, oh, look at that. Yeah. What a fantastic demonstration. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railman of Kent, wow. Well executed, very well executed. Last to demonstrate, it's the Loco Ladies, who have tackled troublesome tracks and navigated choppy waters to get here. Will their nostalgic romp through bucolic Britain take them to a land of hope and glory? Well, let's see your girl power start your engines. Basically, we chose to call the layout Bucolic Britain because it relates to all the pleasant aspects of the British countryside and country life. So we chose to put it in the 1960s, partly because some of us can remember being children in the 1960s. Okay. And somehow or another, holidays always seem to be so idyllic when you were younger. So we have mountains, we've got rivers, we've got valleys, we've got a very, very pretty little village. We have a seaside area and we have a river and an estuary. The RNLI is about to do a rescue because unfortunately the people on that boat mistook how high the bridge was and have landed in a little bit of problem. Time for the rescue. Oh, well, we can hear something. Yeah. Sorry. Give it a nudge. Work. Oh, oh, oh there we go. Oh, yes, it's working. Well done. Yes. Oh. Coming straight to the rescue. And here we are. Brilliant. Well done, Chrissy. <laughs> That's very good. Such a relief. There's and another rescue as well, isn't there? There is indeed. We have a barn that's on fire. Mm. And the barn... Sorry, there is an effect about to take place. Yep. <laughs> Never mind. The fire has spread from the barn yep. into the farmhouse. Wow, it has, actually. It's really cool. So what we do have, then, is our fireman. Oh. Oh, oh hello. Oh. Oh. We have smoke. So, very sadly, somebody has had an accident in a cave. Ah. And you can actually oh, wow. see from the outside here right. the cave oh, rescue oh, taking place. Yes. Look, he's in trouble. But oh, they've got him. He's on a line. The one thing we haven't mentioned, though, is the forest at the back here. We thought we would just bring colour and shape and design and odd things that they wouldn't expect to see. So we have a psychedelic forest at the back there. Carol, surely you must be proud of your girls. I am absolutely thrilled to have worked with them. And we have had such fun. Well, give them a round of applause. It's a loco lady. <laughs> The demonstration phase is over, and now it's down to the judges. Can the Cambrian coasters claim victory, despite a pasty behaving nasty? If you're a southern get, a pasty behaving nasty. It went OK, with the exception of the train derailment, which was caused from a drooping coupling, not track. So, annoying. But we could still be with the chance. Will the loco ladies snatch top prize with their cunning crochet and host of heroic rescues? I mean, there was a little hic hiccup with the lifeboat, but it looked great. If we win, we'll be thrilled to bits. Or will the Railman of Kent's right royal knees up see them added to the honours list? I think our build has clearly been appreciated by the judges, so I'd be really hopeful we would be in with a good chance of winning this competition. Welcome back to the only competition show on TV where being skilled at very little is considered a good thing. Three teams are attempting to rule Britannia with their best of British themed layouts, but who will reign supreme? Wow, those demonstrations were great. Absolutely. And now we get to talk about functionality, how well those layouts actually worked. Let's begin with Railmen of Kent with Bodicea Park. How much was going on here? Well, I loved it as a layout. 
there are just so many different trains on there, and they've actually chosen different eras to represent sort of the best of British trains as well. The flyby was fantastic. The trains run faultlessly. They managed to lift a wagon up from one track to another, yeah. and, and then, then go and hitch it and shut yeah. it. Fantastic. And inside that station, wow. What a beautiful eye-level view it creates. But there was one slight thing. There was this terrible sight of an electrical terminal block peering over the oh. platform end. So I'm going to mark down build quality. Has anyone else seen this terminal block? There was a tree in view for the rest of us. Steve was just a little bit further to the left so he could see it. Hawkeye. Next up, then, Cambrian Coasters. Well, the Cambrian Coasters had an eclectic mix of lovely modelling, but no overall direction. The haggis unloading was quite funny, but sadly the Cornish pasty crimping train fell off the tracks. Oh, yeah. They did have a few untimely derailments, didn't they, really? One major positive point for me was the forced perspective. Bob down, and wow, it really worked. The thing I struggled with, when you're doing forced perspective, you want it to become less in focus and less detailed as you go back. And they'd done that with this black cutout of a city or something. Skyline, yeah. And then they put a very detailed bridge behind it, which to me just right. destroyed that illusion. That just leaves loco ladies. Fantastic injection of magic into what is really a railway for mum, dad and the kids. It was fairly simplistic but the trains ran and the animation worked. Maybe not so adventurous animations, but they worked. Kathy. There were two loops of track which weren't connected and one point. I felt they just didn't demonstrate enough functionality for a really high score. So what they did generally work well. You know, the burning building was effective. Mm. The lifeboat, a bit of a damp squib, really. The cave rescue I did like. Okay. That was really good. What about the crochet trees? I love the crochet trees. I like my layouts to look like the real thing. And I've never walked out into the countryside and seen a crochet tree sitting in a field. Ooh. You guys put on a great show. You're great modellers. We asked for the best of British and all three of your layouts have given us that. Only one, though, can go directly through to the semi-final and to find out who that's going to be. Judges. The winners are... <laughs> Railmen of Kent. <laughs> the Railmen of Kent are through to the semi-finals, but sadly, it's the end of the road for the others. Their scores didn't top the runners-up from Heat 2, Team Phoenix, who could still win the wildcard place in the next round. Wow, three brilliant layouts. But for me, there was one clear winner. The Railmen of Kent with their elegant and artistic modelling. How superb. A true homage to the days when handcrafted model making was king. Ultimately, the right team won. That was a really lovely layout that they built. Well done. Cheers, Graham. It was a really good experience. I'd love to do it again. I am very proud of the layout that we made, and I'm extremely proud of that team of mine. They've been fantastic. Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. We're really, really pleased. I'm so lucky both to have talented sons and talented relatives that we've been able to come together to, to meet the challenge. I think it's going to strengthen the bonds between us. We are ready and up for the next round. Bring it on. Well done. Next time on the Great Model Railway Challenge, three new teams will build layouts that delve deep into the unknown with the theme Uncharted Territory. We'll be taking places we've never been before and make model railway history. But who will be victorious? The winning team is... Catch all that new next Friday at 8. With Malibu sea views and two private beaches, enter one of the world's multi-million pound mega mansions. Brand new Sunday at 9. And tonight, what's hidden inside the wings of Air Force One? Secrets of the presidential plane reveals all. Brand new next.